Hi everyone. Um, my name is Nick Holt and I'm the Research and Development Manager at Leaf Expression Systems. Today's webinar is going to be talking about plant-based expression. Um, molecular farming has sort of emerged over the last few years as an attractive proposition to generate high-value proteins in plants. Um, there's several different technologies that you can use to express your protein, um, ranging from a sort of traditional method of, of production in plants using transgenic plants um, all the way through to viral expression. Um, what we use at Leaf Expression System is transient expression, and I'll sort of talk you through some of the advantages of using this system over sort of traditional transgenic plants, um, cell suspensions or viral expression as we go through the webinar. Plants are an attractive platform to produce um, proteins on because they're quite cheap to grow, uh, so you can produce plants in the greenhouse at very low cost. Um, it's a very good platform for rapidly selecting whether your candidate protein is going to express. Easy to scale up because the scale up doesn't involve um, sequential growth through different size reactors. You can just increase the number of plants to increase the scale of production. There's a very low contamination risk from human pathogens because plants aren't a host for most known human pathogens. In fact, there's no known viruses that infect plants that can infect humans as well. And it's very simple to generate the biomass really the plants just need some growth media some light and some water and at leaf expression systems we use a plant called nicotiana benthamiana it's a relative of this um, sort of of tobacco and it's used because it's very easy to work with it's been used in research for quite some time and is essentially a lab rabbit for the plant science world with the plants like a rabbitopsis being more like the lab mouse So the process that we go through to produce proteins transiently in plants is we start off with a, a plant, we um, grow up a bacteria called Agrobacterium tumefaciens. Um, this naturally transforms the plant and that bacteria is infiltrated into the plant leaves using a vacuum process. Once in the leaves, the bacteria transform the plant cells and then we leave the plants for a few days as the um, proteins express and accumulate in the leaves. Then we'll harvest the tissue and purify the proteins from the tissue in subsequent steps using a variety of filtration and chromatography steps to get our purified product. We can achieve this process in around seven to 10 days from infiltrating the bacteria to extracting the proteins, depending on the, the time of harvest and the complexity of purification. Um, so on the next slide, we've just got a comparison of the sort of development scale for producing something in mammalian systems compared to what it would be in the plant production system. And you can see in the red arrows that there's various different um, go, no go decision points. And in the plant system, we can reach the first of these points, which is sort of establishing whether the protein actually expresses well or not at a much earlier time frame than we can in the mammalian system, because we don't have to go through clone selection and do all the validation that's associated with that. So in a few weeks, we can um, determine whether we've got a protein that's going to work in our systems and we, we know whether we can carry on or we need to go back to some development of the actual expression construct. And we also reach other developmental go-no-go -no -go decisions much earlier during the scale-up process. And in plant systems, because if we want, when we want to scale up, we only need to increase the number of plants. The common pitfalls that are encountered scaling up mammalian cell expression systems don't occur because we just need, need to simply increase the number of plants. So on this slide, we've got a comparison of the different advantages and disadvantages of various different expression systems. And you can see that sort of for a plant system, it's very cheap to produce the materials in stable transgenic plants, it's even cheaper because you can then start growing into field production of, of the plants and produce it on a massive scale. Um, for other systems like bacteria and yeast, the production is also very cheap and it becomes more expensive as you sort of increase the complexity of your system by going into mammalian systems, which is probably the most expensive when you start using chemically defined media with expensive growth hormones, etc. Um, the speed of production, because we're using a transient system, is very quick. The 
more conventional way of producing proteins in plants using a stable method is very slow because you have to go through many generation times to produce the the seed line that you're going to use for production and that can take a few years to produce so we go from being one of the slowest manufacturing sort of platforms to being one of the fastest just by that step change from using transient technology um, other systems are also fast like yeast and bacteria however when we look at the mo modifications in those systems plants have a much more favorable modification system because the, they're being a eukaryotic system they can produce all the post-translational modifications that you'd see in anything like mammalian cells um, and they're also very scalable as i previously mentioned which is doesn't necessarily apply to other systems So for a plant-based um, production platform, we can produce a lot of different types of, of products from antibodies, vaccines, enzymes, and we can also do metabolic pathway engineering where we add in several different proteins that give us a, a different novel or known metabolite product, um, which can be used for various treatments such as cancer. So one of the products that we're able to produce in plants is virus-like particles known as VLPs. Um, these can produce at sort of at quite high quantities in plants. That also has the advantage that we can produce them very quickly. Um, this is in, in comparison to sort of traditional egg-based technologies where there's a long lead time in producing enough vaccine to immunize population. The advantage of producing vaccines very quickly is when there's an outbreak of disease, we can respond to that very quickly. And produce a vaccine in a very short time frame, which will allow for health professionals and the immediate population to be vaccinated without the risk of further infection. Um, we can also use these virus-like particles for applications such as um, nanotechnology for loading with dyes and drugs, which can be used for imaging and treatment regimes. So at Leaf Expression System, we've produced a number of antibodies over the past year. And we've, we can show them to be similar to the mammalian produced antibodies and they have similar binding activities and, and function. The advantage of producing antibodies in plants is that we can um, produce them at a lower cost and we can also produce antibodies at a rapid um, time frame, as was shown in the outbreak of Ebola where the ZMAP antibody was used to, as a primary treatment until other vaccination alternatives could be produced. In plants, we can also produce a number of enzymes and leaf expression systems have shown that we can produce several of these enzymes and they all have essentially wild type activity. Um, enzymes can be produced in plants have been used for treatment of rare metabolic disorders such as Gaucher's disease and they can also be produced for industrial applications. One of the advantages of producing these enzymes in plants is we can produce them cost effectively, especially when post-translational modifications are required. Several plant-based pharmaceuticals are emerging on the market currently. There's the influenza vaccine, which is being developed by Medicargo. Um, there's the Ebola treatment called ZMAP, which I've mentioned previously. Um, there's an enzyme replacement therapy, which is being used to treat Gaucher's disease, which has been on the market for a couple of years now. And there's also a series of other animal-free plant-produced products, such as cytokines and recombinant BSA, which are also currently for sale. So if you're interested in trying um, plant expression systems or would like to know more, um, the links are available to contact us or for our web page associated with the video. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. And we'd just like to thank people who have sponsored us financially for grants and for initiating the setup of the company. Thank you.